Hi everyone and uh, welcome to my entry to Paint on Plastics uh, Machine Accreting Competition 2022. Uh, I've chosen Hazegawa's uh, MK44 Ammonite in uh, 120th scale. Uh, this is an awesome kit. Um, I've really enjoyed putting this together. I've had no fit issues, nothing to do with flash at all. Um, very straightforward um, and really impressed with, with uh, the final result. Um, some lovely artwork on the front of the box. There are quite a few reviews on YouTube. So if you want some more detailed information um, on the actual kit, um, then feel free to look those reviews up. But uh, obviously I will give you information uh, as I go along with the build. Uh, the instructions are very straightforward. Um, if you're careful and do exactly what it tells you to do, uh, you will have no issues whatsoever. Um, these are little uh, cards uh, that you can collect um, for the different uh, ammo nights that are available to you. Uh, you have two figures, one you can have as freestanding uh, or you can have the driver inside. Um, and these are all the sprues, um, again, nicely detailed, no flash and fitted together like a glove. And finally, we've got a, a vast array of uh, decals uh, so you can choose which way you want to go. And finally, some lovely artwork on the back as well. So stage one uh, is the feet. Um, no uh, real issues here other than the fact that they are left and they are right. Uh, so just be a little bit careful uh, when putting them together. They have uh, plates inside them. Um, one that can be set, uh, as you can see there, to the left and one that can be set uh, to the right. So just make sure that uh, you have them um, put in the uh, right uh, side. Um, otherwise that may cause you issues further forward, but uh, really should, shouldn't be a problem to you at all. Um, lots of fixings here, rubber fixings. Um, they work perfectly, fit perfectly. Uh, very impressed again. Uh, so if we look at the feet, this is where we're first going to be using them. Um, all fitted in uh, quite nicely. Um, understandably, with my big chunky fingers, uh, they were a little bit fiddly. Uh, but quite quite frankly, that, that there's no issues at all with, with getting these all, all fixed in. And then once you've got the uh, rubber fixings put in, uh, just put uh, on top the uh, other plastic uh, part, which is obviously the, the, the bottom piece. And that fits in snugly. Like I said earlier, I've had no fit issues at all with this build. It's been wonderful. And then just add some uh, li liquid cement into the seams and then just leave that to dry. And obviously there are two of those uh, to be done. So um, because it all fits quite easily, you can pull it apart. So uh, when I come to do the painting stage, I can just easily ease this off and then I can do the painting and weathering of the inside as well. Now, this is all very smooth. Now I'm looking for quite a battle hardened ammo night. So I'm gonna roughen up uh, quite a lot of the uh, smooth edges um, on this um, model. So out with the um, drill uh, with a uh, round um, coarse bit. I just basically made some um, damage really. Um, it's entirely up to you what sort of bit and how you want to go about it if you want to do any damage at all. Um, but once it has been completed just use your finger nails just to take off the excess. Um, and as you can see it's quite an effective look already. But to, to improve it what we now do is get some liquid cement or liquid glue, whichever you want to call it, and put that all over, and then just leave that uh, to one side to dry. And then once it's dry, you can use your file and clean up it, any rough edges that there may be left over. So there we go, two, two feet. Uh, very pleased with how that's turned out. So now we're looking at the front mask. 
Um, again, uh, nicely detailed pieces because this can all be open if you want it to. Um, so what I wanted to do here was to create um, a very rusted effect uh, on the front. Um, also I want to add it, some weld seams and also I want to uh, add some texture um, around on the smooth surfaces as well. Uh, the kit comes with um, rivets, uh, round headed rivets. I wanted to be a little bit different, so I've replaced those with uh, Meng screw nuts just to be uh, different from some of the other builds out there. And as far as the rust uh, effect goes, um, it's the standard usual uh, Mr. Surfacer. Always keep your, your lid on, just pour some out because um, otherwise you'll find your whole pot will go hard uh, quite quickly. Um, and then just get an old brush um, and then add it to the um, area that you want to add the texture to. There are several videos uh, on YouTube uh, showing you how to do these techniques. Um, there's various ways of doing it with different tools. So just have a play around um, and find a, a way that you like and a look that you're happy with. I personally wait for it to dry a little bit and then I'll get a um, cut off smaller brush and then start doing a stippling effect just try and create uh, areas of um, troughs and peaks and then once that's dry I'll sand that down uh, to create a rusted effect and I was really pleased with uh, how that turned out and I'm quite looking forward to uh, seeing that uh, painted up uh, with the rust effects. As far as the arms go, again, very straightforward. Uh, just stick to what, exactly what the instructions tell you to do. Two sections, the upper and the lower arms. And again, they're very movable because of the uh, rubber joints in there as well. As far as the hands go, no issues there at all. I thought they were a little bit bland, so I just added some um, two mil uh, discs just to show some sort of pins for movement. Uh, then we have the uh, gun. Um, not too bad. Um, certainly room for improvement. Um, but uh, overall, yeah, no issues there at all. Um, I decided to take uh, the molded uh, wire off. Also, I was going to add on an extension, this part here. The actual um, ammunition belt or drum, I decided to, to add some detail onto there. And the, the handle was just a matter of uh, putting some um, wood grain on there. So there's the detailing um, for the uh, ammo drum. Sanded all of the uh, wire off and then replaced it using uh, two mil Tamiya wire, which is uh, plastic coated. Uh, so that's ideal for this particular job. That was uh, stuck in place uh, using uh, CA glue. And then to add some realism, um, I used uh, some pewter and uh, made some strips from the pewter, cut those down to size. And then once done, uh, just added uh, some, some uh, rivets, some pewter rivets. Uh, the wood grain on the uh, handle very easy to do um, if you just get the, the the end of an old pair of tweezers and just make lines down uh, with a wood grain effect and then similarly uh, with the what we did with the feet um, just add some see uh, some uh, liquid cement onto that and then once dry sand that off as far as the uh, drum goes, I added uh, 0.8 um, rod all the way around just to, to add a little bit of interest to that. There I took off the uh, detailing 
and I started to make a um, longer bow um, again using some 0.8 mil rod uh, added plastic card to, to each end and cut that to size and then using um, 2.8 uh, tubing again with a bit of a plastic card disc on the end that would be uh, create the uh, end of the shotgun or the ray gun whatever you wish to call it and once detailed up that that would be added to, to, to the main plastic kit So there we go, had a lot of fun putting this one together. So just uh, added some uh, discs onto the end there just for detailing purposes. Um, used some strip uh, for the MK. Um, using Slater's uh, assorted uh, strip and once painted up I'll probably add the 44 on the, the end of there as well again the Tamiya wire with the uh, pewter strip brackets the bowel I put a pewter strip down the, the uh, centre of that and use some uh, cone rivets uh, for detailing uh, the end part um, I added some uh, two mil uh, discs, and that yellow part is just a, a, an off cut of sprue with a, with a hole drilled down in the middle. And I just added some buttons on the side with some off cuts of um, plastic card. So, yeah, altogether, really pleased with how that. that's turned out. Now the next series of photos um, is, is basically a rundown of, of the main hull and the inside. Now I'm having everything closed so I wasn't really uh, fussed um, but I wanted to, to put it all in just in case it, it affected the balance um, of the model and obviously it'll help you to um, if, if you're building the, the interior. The interior is nicely detailed, uh, there is area for improvement if you wish to. Uh, but quite frankly once that's painted up um, it, it will look re really nice indeed uh, hinge work um, because like I say uh, the top can open up uh, to show the inside and obviously you've got the interior figure as well if, if you want to add that but there we go lots of detail very nicely put together this is probably my favorite part um, this is uh, the uh, pilot seat um, again really crisp detailing and went together perfectly no, no issues here whatsoever as far as the, the back of the hull goes um, you've got some options uh, with, with the different types of shields and ports um, so have a bit of fun uh, decide which one you want to go for uh, I personally just going for the top one and leaving the two ports open at the bottom. And there we go, that's all being put together now. And some lovely detail there on the seat. And as you can see, that can be extended forward so you can see the driver if you wish, or the pilot. And there's the rear views. Now there's quite a few armour plates, um, I decided to uh, add some damage to uh, one or two of them. Uh, quite a simple process, uh, just thin them out as best as you possibly can using a knife and also um, your, your sanding stick. And as you can see, once it's uh, thin enough, you can then get um, some uh, pliers and just very carefully tease it until you get uh, the, the damage that you require. Now, uh, you you uh, come with, uh, the kit comes with uh, some rubber tubing, uh, which is ribbed. Um, however, as with all uh, rubber, uh, it's a nightmare to paint and there's a seam line that goes right through it, which is again, impossible to clean off. 
So just a matter of getting some uh, three mil uh, copper wire, wrapping it around some 2.4 uh, mil rod. Make sure you put your Tamiya tape at the end because otherwise it will start unraveling itself as you're doing it. And then very, very carefully um, rotating the, 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 the rod, allow the um, wire to go onto the rod tightly. And then once, once you've got uh, the length that you require, uh, very carefully take it off of the rod and then replace the rod with um, a piece of 7 or 0.7 mil uh, wire uh, that has been shaped uh, the, the way you would like the um, coil to go. Um, and that's a, a, a lot uh, more realistic and, and a more effective way of doing the... Um, the uh, I don't know what would you call it, plastic tubing, uh, coils, I'm not, I'm not into science fiction, I'm sure there's a, a, <laughs> a name for it, but uh, as you can see, it's uh, a, a, a very good replacement for what the kit had to offer. Um, fixing the actual feet together, um, remarkably easy, again, went together wonderfully well. If you do go down the road of making your own calls, make sure that it, it is fastened securely with uh, super glue at the end. Otherwise, uh, you'll have a few problems. Uh, but yeah, very pleased with the way it went. On all of these parts, there are seam lines. Uh, I personally, I add lots of glue, and then when the glue oozes out and dries, I, I sand that back. Some of you may want, want to use filler. In my particular case, it wasn't a major issue because I was going to be covering everything with Mr. Surfacer. Um, and there was going to be some weld seams added, which we'll go into later. Now, on the back, um, it didn't quite sit uh, right for me. Um, th th there's a ridge here, um, and th obviously the, the, the armour goes all the way around and comes back to that same point. Um, I didn't think it looked quite right. So what I decided to do um, is to make a little bit of a hatch. Um, I don't know, call it a maintenance hatch, uh, whereby we'll put a couple of handles and you, you could open up the back of the, the heel if you wanted to, to do some maintenance work. So first thing to do was to uh, flatten that curve um, using a um, metal file, getting the worst of it off and then uh, smoothing that down with, a, with an ordinary uh, sanding stick. Then adding some 0.25 plastic card, making sure that you have the gap down the middle and then using some 0.7 um, mil chunky wire uh, for the handles and that was uh, simply bent into uh, shape using your, your, your pliers. Then get yourself a little auger, um, measure out uh, where you want the holes to go and then get yourself um, drills. I strongly recommend you get tungsten tip drills because they do last a bit longer and uh, just drill those holes in and put put them in using the super glue. Uh, the rest of the feet, yeah, again, similarly with the, with the arms, uh, all multi changing, all went together well. You, there is uh, a need to drill some holes for the side pods, so just make sure you you do those correctly. But yeah, it's really pleased with how that how they finished out looking. Now for the for the main uh, top hole, um, I decided to put a little patch on there as, as though it had some damage. Um, None of this kit has any weld seams. Um, no issue with that. I just personally like to have weld seams, so um, I decided to add them using some uh, solder, solder iron, uh, solder wire. Um, I've done a tutorial. If you want to have a look at uh, on the rest of my channel, if you'd like to see how to do um, weld seams using solder wire. But yeah, very pleased with how that turned out. Now, because uh, mine's going to be closed up, there was a bit of a gap uh, on the seam. And obviously, when you come to do your painting, you, you're going to lose your pin washes. So just fill those in with Mr. Surfacer. Um, and then once dry, just scrape off the excess and then sand it smooth. And you, you, you'll have a nice um, um, line then to, to do your pin washes on. Um Again, I like to add some damage, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to make some holes and some marks. So just using a, a, a Sharpie pen or some sort of felt tip, um, I just just, just, just let do some random marks really. Um, obviously more damage on the front, a few bits on, on, on the side. And just map out the damage where you want it to be. 
I did that on all these parts as well as the main hull and then using a pyrograph uh, this is a, a, a very hot instrument like a soldering iron so be very careful with it as soon as you get it to a heat where it can mark the plastic turn the thing off you don't want this to continually get hotter and hotter otherwise it will go through your plastic and then what you'll do uh, you start to make marks as the actual pyrograph is cooling down rather than getting hotter it'll still keep hot enough for, for a good minute or so and then when, when it's cooled down and you can't score your plastic anymore just heat it back up again but that's the safest way to do this and obviously as, as before you've got your marks made with the pen so just follow that and of course just make sure you don't burn your fingers and there we go and that uh, process was repeated on all the uh, areas that I wanted to do it on so that's the little scrapes and scratches what we will now want to do is to do some uh, bullet holes or some ray gun holes whatever you want to call it so we, we change the uh, end now to, to a round end again just pressing it in um, that's not too good an example so I've turned it over and there you go that's the sort of effect that we're after so using those marks again that was done over all the pieces now this does look quite severe uh, but don't panic that uh, they're going to be smoothed down we're going to be putting on uh, some more Mr. Surfacer and by the time it's all finished um, they'll be there but nowhere near as noticeable as they are at the moment so final we're going to add the um, texture uh, all the way around on all the parts again as I said to you before um, I like to use my two brushes you get different results with different thicknesses um, and different drying times so again just practice and um, come up with the, the, the texture look that you've, you're after but again I do always recommend that uh, you sand it down once done to get rid of any uh, loose parts but yeah I was really pleased with how, how that all came out on all the parts that were done I also added some detailing to, to the to the back end as well that was a nice bit of fun enjoyed that and added a radio mast and some wires for the uh, grenade launchers so there we have it um, all put back together again um, really pleased he, he looks the part now um, looking forward to, to painting this one up um, I'll leave you with this video plus a few more uh, photos and close-ups and the very final one is, is as you can see me taking it all apart again uh, in readiness uh, for the painting so this is my first ever science fiction project i thoroughly enjoyed it and i uh, really appreciate you uh, popping in and having a look as well many thanks to uh, all of my subscribers and your continued support of my work and the channel happy modeling